Good afternoon, it's Jeremy. It's Tuesday, May the 7th. And today what I'm using is Open Plotter 3, and I'm receiving weather fax signals using the RTL SDR version 3. Now, um, in previous videos, uh, let's say a couple of months ago, I looked at Open Plotter 3 for uh, AIS use and uh, a Pi Pilot and using sensors, but I thought I would uh, consider the uh, WeFax again. A couple of years ago, I looked at um, Open Plotter 2. Uh, with WeFax, and uh, so uh, today I'm going to be looking um, uh, at Open Plotter 3. Right now um, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm just operating it over um, the local area network with VNC Viewer. So right now we're receiving a station from Boston at 9110 kilohertz or 9.11 megahertz. Incidentally, the details are in the blog post. What I'm, I'm receiving on USB, and I've got about a bandwidth of about five, five kilohertz, and I've placed the WeFax signal right in the middle of the uh, bandwidth. You can hear the uh, very um, distinctive sound of the WeFax. The signal is quite strong. It's anywhere from plus 10 to plus 20 dB above the noise level. Noise level looks like it's around minus 90. And I'm using uh, FL Digi, which is an amateur radio program. Uh, I'm using it to decode the signal. And um, there it is there. And uh, you can see that for a 20 dB uh, carrier to noise ratio, you're, we're getting a very, very good signal. Yesterday I tried it and the signal to noise ratio was around 10 dB. Uh, and it was a very, very grainy signal. But today it's, it's excellent. Um, so in any case, uh, the, um, the version three, um, the version three RTL, you have to add some extra parameters uh, for the direct sampling because normally these SDRs work from, let's say 30, 30 megahertz up to 1.7 gigahertz. But to get it to work below uh, 30 megahertz, they use direct sampling and you need to add um, some extra parameters in the, um, in the file IO devices here. Uh, you'll see that in the blog post. Uh, you have to add some text there to get it to uh, use the direct sampling. So we're looking at FL Digi here, and the uh, image has almost been completely received. Not quite. Down here, you notice that this is the um, waterfall type spectrum, and we've got the the cursors lined up. So the major um, frequency component here on the right hand side you line that up with the right red cursor and then the left red cursor goes over the frequency component on the left here um, what you try and do as well is is um, center the uh, image in the screen these uh, buttons here allow you to move the image to the left and to the right you should see a black border on the left and a black border on the right if I click here you'll see that it's move, it moves slightly there. And you can also arrange the, um, the tilt. If, 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 the, if the image is tilted, you can adjust the tilt there uh, with this control there. So that's basically it for FL Digi. Like I said, we've got a very strong signal and looks like the image is coming in nicely. FL Digi actually stores these images for you. And if you look under user files under FL Digi, you'll see the stored waveforms. Occasionally what happens is if there's a huge noise burst and you lose the signal at the wrong time, you may lose sync and this image will suddenly displace itself to the left or the right and you have to correct it. But like I say, that only happens if you have a large noise burst.